Hey all, welcome back to Mastering Male Vector Portraits. My name is Sharon Millen and in this lesson we're going to look into some theory of male versus female portraits. Now before we jump in on this, here's a little disclaimer. I'll be focusing on stereotypical physical traits of the male sex, which will help you become more aware of the little differences between the sexes. These are general rules to follow when creating male portraits, but not all portraits will have these elements. There is something to look out for and to keep in mind depending on the reference image you may or may not be following. So with that, let's jump in. Chances are you've been rendering mainly females in your vector portrait adventure, so it's easy to get stuck in the mindset that rendering either sex in the same way will be fine. But did you know there are small differences to take in consideration? Let's start with the basics. The shapes you'd use for constructing each sex's face do differ. With males, the shapes are a lot more angular and often rectangular shaped. And with the females, these shapes are a lot more curved. We see females as having softer faces and thus this is reflected in the shapes we use to construct the face because rounder shapes are a lot more soft looking. In general, female noses are seen as being smaller and demure. This is partly correct and partly what society sees in females. So perhaps it's something to consider with your male portrait. Regardless of trends, males tend to have thicker eyebrows. In Western society especially, females tend to pluck their eyebrows, so they'll be more brow bone exposed compared to the male portrait. That's not to say males don't have brow bone present, it just won't be exposed as much. And some males do have manicured eyebrows, which is often common in actors, for instance. And some females may have thicker eyebrows, depending on current fashion trends. Males may have thinner lips than females. However, one of the big misconceptions is, is that males don't have colour in their lips. We see colour in the lips as a female trait due to cosmetics. However, if you even notice in this stock image, there's red and orange tones present in the gentleman's lips. There is a much more obvious shine in the female's lips, however, which is partly due to wearing lipstick. Both sexes have eyelashes, however females have more pronounced eyelashes. This is mainly due to cosmetics. Remember when creating a detailed portrait of males to be sure to render those eyelashes. They are present and they do help line the eyes in order to help them stand out. Depending on hormone levels and society, Male are much more commonly associated with having facial hair. This hair is a lot thicker than the hair that's on the head and should be rendered as such. Often you may need to render stubble or even a five o'clock shadow due to facial hair. All three styles I will touch on in this course. If we look at the hairlines for both of the sexes, you may notice that males have a much more square hairline in comparison to the female. So if you do come to rendering your own hairstyles with either sex, remember to consider these. If you were to research drag queens, their process for applying makeup includes applying it in a way to give the appearance of a rounded forehead and hairline. It's these little differences that can help create their female illusion. Finally, the hair. Both male and females may have long and short hair. As a female myself, I actually have relatively short hair compared to my peers. So it's a little unfair to assume that in order to create a feminine portrait, you must have long hair, or a masculine portrait, you must have short hair. The key thing to remember is that the texture of the hair is different. Males have thicker hair and products typically targeted to males will contain chemicals to benefit their texture of hair. The differences are very subtle between the sexes, but enough that it's worth paying attention to. For some additional homework, go onto YouTube and consider checking out makeup tutorials of drag queens and drag kings who are gender illusionists. They will often show you the processes they have to go through in creating the illusion of transforming a male face into a female face or a female face into a male face. As a portrait artist, I find it incredibly interesting and very inspiring. Next time on Mastering Male Vector Portraits, we're going to be looking at creating the three most important brushes you'll need in this project. If you've already done my two previous courses on vector portraits, you can just use the same brushes for this project and skip ahead to chapter three. Until next time, thanks for listening.